What is up YouTube? Today I'm back with another sensor tutorial. I'm showing you in this video how to use the HCSR04 with RGB, which is a new ultrasonic sensor that essentially combines ultrasonic sensing with RGB to make up some pretty cool projects as you could see in this video right here. I mean, it's essentially an extension of the regular HCSR04, if you're familiar with that, which is a really popular ultrasonic sensor in the DIY community, but this combines that with simply six NeoPixels that can be easily configured for an added effect as you could see in this video. Now they're very bright and indicative and you can use to visually indicate distance or simply add a flare to your project. Now in comparison with the regular HCSR04, it's very similar in size. The only difference is the pins are slightly different as you can see the pin sticking out from the bottom there on the regular HCSR04. And now looking on the back here, you can see it has an extra input. It has a fifth input for RGB in, which I'll be showing you how to do with the Arduino Uno in this video. So let's get into it. Okay, first step as always is the physical setup as if you watch my videos before, we always start off with that. You will need all the items as shown in the photo here. So you'll need the sensor itself, some jumper wires as you can see colored here. So you'll need five jumper wires and you also need an Arduino Uno with a power supply. So I link that all in the description below. I bought all of these items on Amazon and so can you if you are based in the United States. Now, as I mentioned, the only difference with the RGB uh, sensor, the RGB HCSR04 is the the RGB in pin. So this is the only additional pin you have compared to the regular HCSR04 and this allows you to control one of the six onboard Neo pixels in this sensor, three in each barrel, and we connect that to pin number two. And you could use really any Neo pixel library to control these Neo pixels. Neo pixels are really a popular standard for controlling RGBs and we'll go we'll go into that in the code of this video. But for now, just know we have six Neo pixels on board, three in each barrel. Secondly, what you have here is you have the standard plugins for the regular HCSR04, as you could see with these four pins right here. So let's start off with the trigger pin, as you can see labeled in TR. This pin is used to trigger the ultrasonic pulse when the pin receives a high signal of five volts. The, the sensor then sends out a short ultrasonic pulse. Secondly, we have the echo pin, also in the regular HCSR04, in this case labeled EC, which this pin is used to receive the echo of the ultrasonic pulse. When the sensor detects the echo, it outputs a high signal whose duration is proportional to the distance to the object. Now finally, we have the ground pin in black here, which this pin is connected to the ground zero volts of the circuit. And we also have VCC, which is connected to five volts to power this sensor. Now what's cool about the sensor, if you're not interested in the RGB, you can actually plug that out and just play around with the, the ultrasonic capabilities or vice versa, you can, you can unplug the ultrasonic capabilities and just play around with the RGB or do both simultaneously, which is what we'll do in this video. And finally, that's all you have in terms of the physical setup. So if you have everything set there, you should be good to go. And now let's jump into the Arduino IDE to talk about the libraries and some code samples. Okay, now jumping into the code for this sensor, it's actually relatively straightforward thanks to these libraries we have. So we have RGB LED H, RGB LED CPP. So I will link these libraries in the description below. You can find them on my GitHub page. And what you have to do to get all this set up is the first thing you want to do is you want to obviously connect to your Arduino in the Arduino IDE, make sure everything is set up and fine. And you want to instantiate a sketch by doing a new sketch. Now in this sketch, what you want to do is you want to import these two library codes. So the first one, rgblad.h, rgblad.cpp. In order to do that, what you want to do is you just want to include a library or add a file. So I just click add a file. And if you download the file, you can just go and click these files and add them to your sketch, which should then be ready to use in the sketch itself. Now in this sketch here, what I have initially is I am initiating the RGB pin, as you saw in the physical setup, which is pin number two. This is the pin that allows us to control the onboard LEDs of the sensor. Now what I'm also doing here is I'm just instantiating some colors in hexadecimal, just to show you guys later on all the colors you can uh, loop through in a rainbow, which I'll show you, which I showed you at the beginning of this video, but I'll show you in the code here in a bit. And I'm throwing all of those colors in a list here. So it's a list of six items, which I'm going to loop through later on. And of course I initiate the index at zero. Now, finally, what I do is I use the library to create an ultrasonic sensor RGB object with the RGB pin I set. 
and with six onboard LEDs. So this is a nice NeoPixel library that allows you to configure the amount of NeoPixels you have in the device. In this case, in our device, as I mentioned, we have six onboard NeoPixel LEDs, three in each cylinder. Next thing we want to do in the setup, so for the first simple example is, we just want to loop through the first three LEDs and set a color. So what we're doing here is we're setting a random color yellow and how we're setting yellow is we're first setting the, the NeoPixel number. So we're looping through the first three NeoPixels, one to three, and then we're setting the RGB values for yellow for those first three RGBs. Secondly, to play around with it a little more here, what, what we're going to do is set the remaining colors of the other three NeoPixels to red, green, and blue. So for these two, we set them once again with RGB values for red and green. And for blue, we can also use the hexadecimal value. So what's cool about this library is you can use the RGB values and the hexadecimal values as well. Now finally, what we do to show all those colors at the same time as we do ultrasonic RGB.show. And if you did set everything correctly in terms of the pins and the code in the libraries, and the code is correctly uploaded to your, to your sensor, to your Arduino, I should say, and you run it, you should see the colors as shown in this photo right here. So you can see the, the colors are stagnant in this photo. And that's because we didn't play around with changing the colors in real time. We just showed them. What we're gonna do in this next example is we're actually going to loop through and change the colors dynamically. Okay, so in order to change the colors dynamically of the sensor, it's also pretty straightforward. I already have the code here in the void loop. I commented it out before, so it wasn't running. So I'm just gonna go ahead and comment it out. And I'm actually, let me tab this over because this should be tabbed just for better readability here. So what I'm doing is I'm just looping through the, the indexes up to six. And once I get to six, I reset it as zero. And I'm using these indexes to index back into this list here, as you could see, which has a set of colors that are set here. And obviously you can set these colors to whatever you want, but we're just setting it to red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Okay, and then what I'm doing is I'm just looping and I am setting the LED from one to six. So the first LED is actually labeled one and then all the way up to six. And I'm setting it to a color in that list based on the, the color number I get here, which is just an index in this list up here. And then I am doing that for all the LEDs and I'm showing them. And then finally, I'm doing this every 150 milliseconds. So I'm doing that fairly quickly. And obviously the things you can change here are you can change the delay, you can change the number of colors you have here, you can change the number of colors in this rainbow, you can do a bunch of different things with the hexadecimal values, with the with RGB if you like. So you can get pretty creative there and play around with it. But the main premise of it is that it does have to be in the void loop so it can keep changing every iteration. And you do have to have some list for it to iterate through and set the LED number to a certain value in that color list. So that's pretty much it. So if you go ahead and run this, it should upload. So what's going to happen is it's going to essentially clear what's going on in this void setup and start rainbowing. So if you did set that up correctly, it should look how you see in this video here quickly. So you can see in this video, it's changing pretty quickly and the colors are quite vibrant and nice. And so good job if you got up to this point. We're going to talk about simply getting ultrasonic values from the sensor because you can also do that as well. Okay, so now jumping back to the code. So what I did was I cleared the RGB stuff in the code and we're just gonna focus on the ultrasonic portion. So if you do have an HCSR04 from before, you're probably familiar with how this works and it's pretty straightforward. So we're just setting up the corresponding pins for the trigger and echo pin and we're just instantiating some variables from the beginning. So long for duration and int for distance. And in the void setup, what we're doing is we're calling the pin modes on the trig pin and the echo pin. So we just sets the trig pin as an output, sets the echo pin as an input. So the comments are pretty straightforward there. And we're just going to start reading essentially to the serial monitor. And we're going to start calculating based on the values we get in this void loop. So what's going on in this void loop is we're actually sending out a signal from the echo pin, and then the trigger pin is waiting for an echo. So it reads the echo pin. And then once it reads an, an echo from the echo pin, what we have is we want to measure the distance by using simply the distance formula, which is distance equals velocity times time. So duration is the time. And then the velocity here, I believe is in centimeters per microsecond, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And then simply what we do is we divide it by two because it goes back and forth. So we have to divide that by two to get the distance. 
If we didn't divide by two, we'd get double the distance. And then finally, we just print that and we do this every 10th of a second. So you can obviously increase this. So if you have all the setup as well here and you start running it, what you will see is you will start seeing values in your serial monitor. Um, my sensor is just faced on its face right now, so it's just telling me a distance of two. But obviously if I have something in front of it, it will start to change. So you can see I put something in front of it and I changed it. So you should do the same as well if you set everything up properly. And that's pretty much it in terms of this whole sensor suite. So you see how to get the distance with the ultrasonic portion. You see how to mess around with the RGB in. Now my challenge to you for this video is to combine them into some interesting project that may be where you have the colors change based on the distance to an object to maybe signify if an object is far away with, with green and if object is close by with with red and in between with orange maybe something that sort of thing would be pretty cool i would imagine and if you like this video and if you like this sensor please leave a comment and like this video as well and as always guys stay tuned to the channel let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below please subscribe to the channel if you haven't it would mean a lot and as always you know what i say stay tuned